and as I became more used to speaking to the Indian audience, I became more bold about it, and and uh, and they had, they were attracted to that. How a Westerner feels about their culture, they were very interested in that. Because one thing I was told too is that Bajpayee, when he was the prime minister at the time, he said, you know, you Westerners can say what we cannot, and I didn't know what that meant. What does that mean? What we Westerners can talk about the Vedic culture in a way that the Indians cannot? And then I realized, yeah, a lot of times swamis that speak in front of an audience, they're expected to say certain things. You know, they, they, you know what they're going to talk about or what they're going to uh, con- try to convince you of. But for a Westerner to come, it was a totally different thing. Why would a Westerner who's grown up in an affluent materialistic culture come to India and talk about how grand and how great and how influential the Vedic culture is. So that's what uh, I understood where now I can see, I could see where I could say things and Westerners can say things that sometimes, I mean, if it's done appropriately and diplomatically, we can say things that the uh, other people cannot say and be more convincing about it because we have no agenda, so to speak. And uh, so that caught on quite a bit. So I went through that whole uh, tour. And then uh, just several minute. months later, they asked me to come back. Yeah, this, just a minute. Sorry, just a little backtrack. So you said you wrote the book in 1986. And then... Well, I, I first started writing books in 1986. So your so first, I wrote... Okay. The first book was The Secret Teachings of the Vedas. Oh, okay. <clears throat> then after that came uh, The Universal Path to Enlightenment. And then after that came the uh, Vedic prophecies. Uh, after that came the uh, how the universe was created and our purpose in it. And so it kind of developed after that. And then there was a few more books. And then in 1998, I think it was, that's when I wrote uh, Proof of Vedic Culture's Global Existence. Oh. And that's basically what opened the doors. I mean, that book, the thing of it was, when I wrote that book, I didn't think too many people would be interested. I thought it was a topic that should be told, but I didn't think too many people would be interested in reading about it. Sure. Mm. So I wrote it in kind of a very informal way. I didn't use, I used a lot of references, but I used, I put a lot of the references in the back of the book, whereas opposed, I didn't use a lot of footnotes and things like that. Yes. Biggest mistake I ever made because I didn't realize that this became one of my best-selling books, and it's still a very a good seller today. Yeah. Even though afterwards, 10, 15 years after that, I started putting together another book called The Mysteries of the Ancient Vedic Empire. And in that book, I used completely different information, completely different references, and I used a lot of footnotes and you know, uh, quotes from different uh, sources, to show exactly where all this information was coming from. Okay. So that was done much more academically, I might say. Okay. And uh, yes, so that's how I got started, basically. Okay. So then all this time from 1986 to 1998, there was no, practically, I don't think there was Amazon or eBooks. So how did you publicize the books? Because self-publishing now is much easier than it was at that time. So... Well, what I did at first was I, uh, I formed it as part of a home study course. So I had a book, I had tapes, I had uh, the transcriptions of the tapes, I had other notes, and then a test that you take, and then you get a certificate. And I, I would advertise in magazines. Of course, back then, there was much fewer magazines to choose from than there are today. And uh, so I would sell a few copies of the course but I found where most of the people, uh, they were just interested in the book. So I thought, okay, well, that's good enough. That's fine with me. Uh, but then what happened was, uh, later on, there was a company called Baker and Taylor. And they started ordering copies of the books. And now Baker and Taylor is a major book distributing company. And they sell to a lot of uh, bookstores, university bookstores, things like that. Now, when they started ordering the book, then I thought, okay, okay, I got to take this a little more seriously. 